Well, hi there, Jeff here from Picture Time, and welcome back to the channel. And I'm back here with my father-in-law, Tim. Yes, hi. <laughs> hi, Tim. Oh, hi, Tim. I threw you off on that one. You did. Wow. So we're back with another episode of our restoring a 1931 Model A Woody Wagon. Um, last we left off, we dropped off the motors in Jordan with Dave Gerald. Exactly. Have you heard from Dave how the motors Several doing? times. He's actually uh, gone through two of the engines. We actually dropped off four because we, uh, we knew we had to have an extra if, if one was not good. So he found out uh, the first one he looked at was not good, it had some cracks in the head between the valves. And then he found one that was good and he's, he's uh, busily restoring that. He went through it, took it all apart, checked everything over for cracks and uh, cleaned everything up, painted it, and now it's at the machine shop getting machined. All right, that'll be fun. And I think we plan to, when it gets a little closer, to go back down there. He said we're uh, welcome to come anytime, and he'll also be sending pictures and uh, give us updates All that right. way. So, so we'll great. update you with the, with the motor, but since we last left off here, we're back up at the cabin, and uh, you had tried kind of test fit the wood floor on the chassis. Right. Since then, you've kind of taken that apart, taken the chassis apart, started sandblasting some of the parts, right? Exactly. Tell us a little bit about what you've been up to here, and then let's show the folks here what you've been working on. All right. Well, we keep busy with the project here. One of the things that happened, uh, it was a hunting weekend or hunting week that we were here and uh, we started taking things apart. So I think uh, we didn't do too well on Saturday and Sunday hunting, so we decided to take the Model A apart. Uh, but also the weather was nice and warm then and now it's cold. It's like minus 11 this morning. And uh, so it's nice to have a heated garage, insulated and, and a nice place to work. That's minus 11 Fahrenheit for those of you watching overseas. <laughs> and it's really cold. Really cold. But anyway, it's nice to have a nice heated <laughs> garage to work in. But yes, we, uh, Nolan and I, my grandson, Jeff's son, took the uh, chassis all apart. We took the, the cowl off first, took the, took the wood uh, floor off, and then we began by taking the rear end off, differential, and then the front end off, the steering column. And from there, I took the frame itself to, to the Twin Cities, had it sandblasted at a shop that does specifically this. And then from there, we took a lot of the other parts that we disassembled that day, and we cleaned them up, sandblasted them on our little sandblaster that we have here, and got them all painted and ready to install. So we're almost ready with all of the little parts to get them back, and we got the frame already painted, and it's ready to go as well. We need to go through the rear end and the front end yet. Yeah, so what, I'll, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch places, I'm gonna jump behind the camera. Okay. And I want you to show us kind of some of the parts that you've done. Also, I understand you're using a special kind of paint, so I want you to show me the kind okay. of paint that we're using. Great. Yes. Um, and some of the plan um, as we go forward and bring you this project. All right, Tim, so let's, uh, let's see what we got here. Well, we've uh, done a lot of cleaning up. As I mentioned, our little sandblaster worked really well for cleaning up these parts and then painting them. This is, first of all, the, the front spring, which we cleaned up and uh, got it all painted and ready to go put together. We still need to put bushings in this one, but uh, that'll come shortly. This is the rear spring that we, again, uh, took, took apart and cleaned up. We did put bushings on this one already and it's ready to go in. I need to get shackles yet, the correct shackles for it. And then there's also some supports that need to go on each one. What do the bushings look like? Are there any of them here? Yeah, we have bushings. Uh, they're over on my workbench and uh, they'll just slide right in. I'll just go ahead and get one. So the bushings uh, look like this. They're just a steel bushing and uh, they actually uh, have a spot on the shackle that pushes grease in and it lubricates it very nicely. But these are just uh, friction fit. They, they fit in there and I've already put these in but I need to put the ones on the front. You have to actually just taper the front just a little bit and then uh, use a press to drive them in or a vise, either way. And uh, that works out slick. So pretty, pretty easy to do. Great. What else we got going on here? Well, these, these are the motor mounts, and the motor mounts sit on the frame. They've got these six uh, holes, but only four screws that go in place. And then on the other side is where the, en the engine uh, actually is mounted up uh, on the uh, bell housing. Can you show us where those go on the frame? Right. In fact, I'll get uh, one, more, one more thing here. There's a uh, piece of rubber that goes in, uh, and that actually attaches behind this piece right here and let's see I gotta get the right spot here uh, relative to myself yeah this one right here uh, right this goes in like this and this guy fits like that and another one does exactly that same thing on the other side and bolts go through here and onto the bell housing and then that's how the engine is supported on the uh, on the back so and then the other part of the uh, uh, suspension system on the on the motor on the engine is to have a front one. And I'll show you that, how that goes together as well. It might be interesting for you. So this part attaches to the engine on the front, 
uh, right where the timing gear is on the uh, camshaft. And then it's got a piece that goes down through the, through the frame in the middle, but there's a, a spot right here. There's a piece that sits on the frame, and then there's springs that go on either side like this. And then another spring that goes on this bracket, and it all goes together. And it gives you some flexibility so that you don't get vibration through the frame. And then there's a washer and a castle nut that goes on the bottom of that, and you tighten it down so it's nice and tight. And that's in those three points is where the engine is supported. Of these two right here, I call it one, and then the other two back there. So. And while we're over here, tell me a little bit about the frame and then maybe what kind of paint you use because it looks yeah. obviously pretty shiny. Um, what did what, you do to it? Was there much rust pitting or anything? Or? Well, actually, it was in pretty good shape. The, the frame was from Texas, and uh, so there wasn't a lot of salt. It's in pretty good shape. So uh, we just sandblasted it. It was nice and straight. It's uh, really straight as an arrow on the two top pieces right here, which is what you need to check for. And then, uh, yeah, we had it sandblasted, and then we uh, treated it with uh, three different products here to make sure that it was in good shape. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to clean it, make sure that you have all of the grease and all of the dirt and that kind of thing off. And then you use a rust blast. What it does is it actually dissolves the rust and it uh, turns it back into just regular metal. And then the rust seal paint is what you actually use over the top. And it's specifically for frames and for rusty parts. Anyway, so that's, that really works well to use it for that. And it's really, really tough. Once you put the paint on, and it sets up, you can't dissolve it. There's no solvent that'll actually dissolve it like, a, like a, a varnish or like a thinner or a um, acetone or anything like that. It's, it's really, really a solid uh, paint that's made specifically for this purpose. So I'm happy about that. I'm going to also top coat it with a, a, a paint that's not quite so shiny. Actually, original Model A's uh, had a more of a, a satin finish rather than such a shiny finish as this. So, but we're almost ready to go with the frame. It looks good. I'm ready to start putting it together. What other parts are over here that we sandblasted and painted? So these are the brake parts. The, the uh, brakes themselves for stopping the car are actually operated with this shaft. There's a piece that hooks on to the brake uh, pedal itself, and then these two levers uh, attach to these rods. There's four rods, two in the front and two in the back, and uh, they, they hook up to the, to the four wheels. Uh, and they've, there's levers there, and there's, there's rods here, and that's how the brakes work. There's no hydraulic in this case. This is for the emergency brake. And the emergency brake is actually hooked to the emergency brake lever and comes through here. And then there's, there's uh, levers on either end and they actually hook to these rods and they're hooked up to the rear end. And uh, that's how your uh, car stays still when you're, when you're stopped. Now you, you're gonna actually, um, probably for the next video, be working on the front and rear ends. You, I think you've sandblasted the rear end, but maybe can you show us where the brakes hook up on the rear end? Oh, and then, sure, yeah? yeah. So here we have the, the uh, rods that we're talking about. And uh, the one side is for the, uh, just a regular stopping brake. And it, what happens is we've got this uh, bracket right here that goes in and the clevis pin that goes through that. And when you brake, the lever here pulls and it pulls forward and, it, and the brake shoes up against the brake drum. And then the emergency brake is right down here. So the other shaft that we have fits in a similar way and that's the emergency brake and it holds it from moving and you just pull the lever and it, it stops it that way. So that's pretty basic, but it works really, really well. And now that we're over here by the rear end, uh, yes. what do we got going on on this? It looks like this has been sandblasted. I did sandblast it. Again, I need to treat it with the two, two treatments before we paint it and uh, get it all perfect. But I'm gonna, before I do that, I'll be taking off the base plates right here, which is four bolts. I'll also be taking up brakes completely apart in order to be able to clean up everything. If there's bushings that need to be changed or shafts that need to be changed or brake shoes themselves. Actually, I took them apart uh, a couple of weeks ago and it looks like the brake shoes are almost like new. So I may not have to do anything with those, but we'll check it out and make sure that everything is per spec and it'll work out well. I was also talking about the springs before. This is the spring attachment. And so the spring that I showed you before for the rear, had a new shaft that went through it. Uh, and this is where the uh, shackle goes in place with grease zerks on either side to be able to grease it up. And then the, the spring kind of hangs on that and that's what supports the car. So that's kind of a neat thing. And then the shocks will be put on as well. And they're actually hooked to this little ball device right here and hooked to the frame with an arm. And that kind of fits up under this big hump right in the back of the frame. That's where the, that's where the uh, rear spring fits. There's a couple of large clamps that fit here, come out here, and, the, and the, the spring fits right in this area. Similar kind of thing happens in the front, and we'll be doing the same kind of thing there where we take the uh, parts, the front all apart, and, and uh, levers, and 
We don't have emergency brakes on the front, but we do have the, the regular uh, uh, brakes for stopping on the front. Works out great, yeah. Oh, and these are called the perches. Uh, maybe we can just show you that just briefly here. The spring perches, where the front spring will sit, we put new, we'll be putting new bushings in these and new shackles. And, uh, and then it's the spring that I showed you before will go right in here. This is the brake lever that fits with the front brake. And uh, so again, when the, when the, when the uh, rod is pulled, based on the fact that you're pushing your brake pedal in, it actually pushes the shoe up against the, the drum and it stops it. And if you need to adjust the brakes and adjust the position of the shoe against the drum, you just move this in or out. The more you turn it in, the tighter the brake gets. The more you turn it out, the looser it gets. Totally mechanical. Yep, totally mechanical, but it works really well. I have not, not any problems with these. I'm also going to replace the king pins, which are the, the pivot point, uh, because they tend to wear. And I want to get new, new parts there. And we'll check out, see how the ball, ball joint ends are doing, and maybe replace those as well. So. Again, the uh, shocks will be sitting onto these balls right here, connecting there, so you'll have a good shock system on the front. This is the arm right here that does it, the steering, and it goes back with a shaft that goes back to the steering mechanism, and I'll show you what those are over in the other, other part. And then the pitman arm is actually what, what moves that drag link that's attached here. I'll show you those parts over on the All right, let's go check area. them out. Yeah. So this is the pitman arm, and that hooks onto the uh, steering box with a shaft right here. And this is the drag link that attaches. And again, there's a whole set of uh, springs and uh, bushings and screws that hook, hold that all together. Actually, it goes the other way around. This is going toward the front, and this, this goes toward the rear. So that actually is what, what um, moves the steering back and forth and what steers the car. Cool. And the steering wheel I saw over here um, I understand, are we doing anything to that steering column? Does that just need to be painted or what's this no, plan for I, this? No, I'm going to go through and rebuild it. You can get uh, a whole rebuilt piece right here or you can get the individual pieces for rebuilding it. But again, this uh, Pittman arm hooks on to this square shaft right here and that's what actually, uh, uh, what actually turns the car in that way. So before the next video, what are some of the stuff that we have to keep working on? Well, the biggest thing will be taking the brakes apart on all four corners and uh, getting them rebuilt. And then we'll be painting everything so it looks like brand new. We also need to get the wheels. We have powder coated wheels that we're going to be putting on and we got new tires, new inner tubes, and that'll all be put together at the same time. So when all of this starts coming together, it'll look like a brand new car with everything uh, bright and shiny and, and ready to go. Um, then once we get the, sh the chassis ready, then we can actually set the engine in place just like we talked about here. And that'll be about March 1st when that, when that chassis gets uh, all put together after the engine comes. Well, thanks Tim today for showing us all this great work uh, on, the, on the Model A. It's exciting to see these steps come along and it keep getting closer to kind of a, the reality of it being done. Well, what we want to do is we want to get the chassis all put together first. We have to do that before we can get started on the wood part of it. So we're just working on the, uh, on the chassis with all the parts that need to be done. Then we need to work on the cowl, get that ready to go. And then we'll ultimately need to work on the fenders and running boards and that kind of thing before we can actually yeah. spill the body. And that'll need body work, of yes, course. Yes, we'll need some yeah. body work on, yeah. the, on the cowl itself. But, all right, uh, well, yeah. in the meantime, we, we thank you for showing us what's going on here. And we appreciate you watching. For those that you might know in your life that are interested in antique cars or restoration projects, tell them about the channel. Feel free to, uh, to subscribe. Again, the channel's kind of full of a lot of different things. We do a lot of, a lot of different things on the channel. And what I've tried to do is organize everything in the, in the channel down at the bottom and create little playlists. So mm -hmm. there's a playlist specifically for this restoration process. So maybe like that playlist or save it so that you get notifications uh, when we release a new video. Thanks again for watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon.